Greetings friends, in this short little video I want to show you how to use VassarStats.net to perform a simple correlation. On the left hand side of VassarStats.net are the various statistical operations that you can use. We want to use correlations and regressions and we want to perform a basic linear correlation and we want to use the data import version which allows us to import data from a spreadsheet. You click on that and there's some information here by way of introduction and at the bottom, towards the bottom, is a place where data is entered. Uh, for this example I went ahead and uh, just created some, some data that we can use for this example. This is uh, hours of study in this column A and then a score on, a, on an assessment in column B. Uh, what you will do is click in the upper left hand corner and then drag to the lower right to copy that data. So then you would go to Edit, Copy, or Control C. Move this out of the way now. And then you click in this dialog box and paste. Make sure the cursor is after the last number in the column to the right. And you hit Calculate. Uh, as with our previous example, there's a lot of numbers here that we don't need to pay attention to. The ones that we do are uh, towards the bottom. Uh, the first number that we're going to look at is this R, which is the correlation. So in this instance, with these numbers, the correlation is 0.5594 or 0.56, which is a moderate correlation. Remember we said that anything between 0 and 3, 0.3 is a weak correlation, between 0.3 and 0.6 is moderate, 0.6 and above is strong. So we know that the correlation is moderate, but also equally important is the p-value. And the p-value is is what tells us whether these, uh, this correlation is statistically significant. Remember, there can be a correlation that's not statistically significant, usually because the sample size is small. So because we believe that this is going to be a positive correlation, we're going to use a one-tailed, the one-tailed number, which is 0 0.0018, so that's less than 0 0.05, which means that these numbers are statistically significant. The last number here is what's called the confidence interval. And what we want to do is, is, is have confidence that 95% um, that of the time, that we would know 95% of the time where the true mean score for this sample would be if it was the entire population. So if, if the entire population was sampled of people who studied for an exam and took the test, and we had that, um, we had those numbers, uh, we would know what the true mean score was. So in this instance, we know that from the small sample size that the true mean score of the larger sample is between 0.21 and 0.78. That's quite a wide, wide range, and again, the reason for that is because we have such a small sample size. So what that means is that um, we have a sample that we've taken, and we have a score for that sample. We would be 95% confident that if we sampled the entire population of people who could take such an exam, that they would be between 0.21 and 0.78, uh, that the correlation would be, would be between 0.21 and 0.78. So again, this number varies a lot with sample size. For reporting purposes, and you'll see this on the assignment, for the reporting purposes you show how to indicate that. But these numbers then, the R value, the T test, sorry, the P value, the R value, the P value, and um, the confidence interval will, uh, will indicate to the person who's reading your study the statistical significance of the study.